to this week's Sunday morning rant. It is actually very early in the morning. It's uh, a fine June day, which is kind of the problem, because <laughs> this was meant to be the rant for Sunday the 31st of May. Um, but it is a fine June day. It is half past six in the morning. And uh, for whatever reason, I am wide awake at this point in the morning, even on furlough, drinking my cup of tea. Now, I have tried to make this video four times this week and failed spectacularly, but I'll come on today in a minute. But before we get going, let's do the normal parish notices. Uh, firstly, if you haven't subscribed, why not? Hit the subscribe icon, subscribe to the channel, support the channel. If you want to be notified when content gets posted to the channel, hit the bell icon. You'll get a notification when I post new content. Consider supporting the channel uh, by a small donation every month. Go over to patreon.com. The address will be down here. That's www.patreon.com forward slash the music tech guy. Remember, guys, the Instagram feed and the Facebook feed are now live. So go find me over there because that's sort of kind of the odd stuff gets posted to those feeds rather than goes onto the YouTube channel. Uh, and finally, remember, we are still in COVID-19 lockdown, uh, although it's eased a little bit. So the message is still stay alert, stay safe, wash the pinkies, and we will eventually get through this. But bow back to the main video. So the question is, why is this video being so taxing to actually do? Um, well, put it this way. So on Sunday, I sat down in the garden. It was a lovely day. And I thought, well, I'll do this video in the garden. So I sat over in a corner of the garden behind me and recorded this. And I did a couple of test soundings on the, on the sound that was coming into the camera. And it all sounded OK. So I sat down. I recorded the whole of this video. And then when I played it back um, a little bit later on in the day to actually edit it down so I could post it for Monday, I found that there was just so much wind noise on the microphone. And I don't know where the wind came from. So going from the test uh, recording just to make sure it was OK to the point where I actually did record it, the wind whipped up and I just had this horrible noise over the microphone all the time. So I had to give up and bin that. Um, set of recordings uh, so I started again on Monday this time I found another area of the garden so late in the evening that area of the garden is well lit it's lovely and sunny you have a sort of a nice little bit of shade coming onto you onto you so I thought I'd sit over there I sat between the evergreens so hopefully got rid of the wind noise and all you can hear <laughs> is birds tweeting <laughs> over my voice, the sort of the high pitched tweet of the bird just sort of washed my voice out. So again, that was the second time I had to bin it off. The third time I decided I was going to do it in the workshop and I ran through, I did the test recording, it all was fine, I ran through the entire video only to find out that the camera um, the issues I've been having with the cameras and sound recording struck again and the audio was barely audible. So this is attempt number four. It is Friday morning. It's actually the 5th of June, uh, say 6.30 in the morning. You can see the sun is coming out because you can see that it's bleaching out the area behind me on camera. Um, but hopefully it won't bleach me out too much. So that's the reason why this is now the fourth attempt at recording this particular Sunday morning rant. Question is, is it going to be worth it? Okay, so first up this week, it's going to be a, a week of a number of bits, I think, this week in terms of the rant. So first up, and this will appear up here somewhere, um, probably that side, uh, this was on last week's Korg Facebook. Um, no, it wasn't. It was on its Instagram feed, sorry. Um, although it's pretty much one of the same now. Uh, and basically, uh, I'll read you the statement. It says, Windows 10 may update. Uh, we strongly advise you not to update your operating system until further notice on this matter. 
So I'm going to take that to read that Korg have basically got a issue with uh, the May uh, 2020 update. Now this is something that's not new, it's something that's becoming more and more prevalent given some of the rants and comments I've had over recent weeks about drivers now stopping to work on things like Catalina. Um, but it looks like um, Korg have basically put out, an, uh, out an, uh, an announcement saying that they have an issue with the 2020 update. Um, I haven't seen a similar uh, notice from other manufacturers, so I'm assuming either not other manufacturers haven't found the issue yet, or it's a specific to the way Korg uh, have been writing drivers, etc., etc. But that's very interesting. So, guys, if you've got a Windows 10 machine and you're running Korg products, the answer is don't do the, win the May 2020 update because it looks like it's not going to work. So that's number one done. So, number two on the agenda. Um, and this is something I, I get asked a lot um, on the channel, or and I see it a lot in the user groups, and it's the general confusion over plug-outs. Um, and I'll, I'll read you the question. Um, has anyone sold System 1 with any of the VSTs that they have paid for um, and they got from the Roland Cloud? Um, so... The expansion of the question is that the, the particular uh, YouTuber was trying to sell his system one. He'd been to Roland, uh, he'd purchased a number of the plugouts for the system one, and he wanted to sell the plugouts with the system one because he decided he didn't need the plugouts anymore. And the, really, what he was asking was could he transfer the license for the plugouts to somebody else? Uh, and the answer, in a very simple way, is no, you can't. Um, and let me just pull this across because that is there you go, bleaching me out. So, as I said, the answer is simply no. And the reason why the answer is no is because the way Roland have implemented this is the plugout is not assigned to the machine. The plugout is assigned to your Roland user cloud user account. And therefore, when you sell the machine, you don't transfer. There's no way of transferring the license from you to somebody else's Roland cloud account. It's it really is that simple. Um, if you have the plugout loaded on the machine, yes, the user who buys that machine will be able to continue to use the plugout. But at some point in the future, when they unload that plugout, they'll never be able to load it back in unless they buy their own subscription to that plugout. So that's the simple. Well, that that is the answer. I don't know if this is the simple answer, but that is the answer. The answer is no. You can't. You can't transfer them. Roland have been asked numerous times whether you whether you could, they could implement a feature that would allow you to transfer them, but at the moment um, the answer is no, you can't do it. Um, which brings us on to a really interesting piece, which is Roland have rejigged their cloud. I don't know whether this is the second time or third time they've rejigged the cloud, and I saw something on one of the user groups a couple of days ago um, that now you can now buy a lifetime license as opposed to having to subscribe. Um, and while you subscribed, you got the license. So uh, what used to happen when the System 1 originally arrived and the uh, ARIA gear arrived is you logged on to, I don't think it was the Roland Cloud at that point, it was the Roland something or other, um, which morphed into the Roland Cloud. You logged onto that environment, you purchased the plug out, you were uh, able to download the plug out onto your machine, you could then use that machine via Ableton or another piece of software to communicate with your system one. So you could either play the plug out directly or you could load the stuff into system one. And you bought a lifetime you bought a lifetime license. And I think they were around about a hundred dollars. I seem to recall that was the number. Then Roland came up with this whole Roland Cloud idea, which is a subscription model. So rather than be able to buy the license outright, what you then did was you then took a subscription out to the Roland Cloud. And if you took a subscription out to the Roland Cloud, you were able to get the, the plug out and you could use it that way. But as long as you and as long as you paid the money every month, you were allowed to use the plug out. And then 
every year that you had a Roland Cloud account, a Roland Cloud account subscription, you then got to keep one of the VSTs that was included in your subscription for life. Yeah, don't get complicated on me. Now they seem to have gone back to a model where you can now purchase the plug out and VST for life again. So you've gone from that model to a rental model to a outright purchase model. Okay, so great stuff. Um, now, I don't know whether that includes updates, but that's kind of where the model is and probably tubers will jump on me and say, well, that's not quite right. But that's kind of how I read it at the moment. Um, I do question, I did question the whole rental model. I mean, I still question the whole rental model. Um, I think for uh, musicians, quite often you'll want something and you want to go and buy that something and not have to worry about it again um, rather than having this sort of recurring money going out every single month. It's like, I've got it, I want that, buy that, job done. Um, but it is the way the software industry seems to be going down this sort of rental model. Um, and I'm not a great fan of the rental model. I never have been a great fan of the rental model. In certain instances, it works really well. In other instances, I'm not sure it really does work at all. It's like Microsoft Office. Um, I was quite happy, to be honest, to go and pay 100 quid for Microsoft Office. Well, it was probably more than that. It was probably 200 pounds for Microsoft Office every couple, every three, four years and just basically sweat the product. Uh, now, we're kind of forced to go down the route of paying... I think I pay about seventy or eighty dollars a year um, for perpetuity to use Microsoft products. So there you go. It's a different. It's, it's going down that route, um, but we are where we are. So that's a change to the license model um, on the Roland Cloud, and a change to the way that um, you implement that on your machine or your music equipment, or your synthesizers, or your system 8 and system 1 and area, and get the drift. You know this talking lark is thirsty work. Also filming at this time of the morning is interesting, because we had, we had bright sunshine um, about 10 minutes ago when I started filming, and now it's come over and I think it's going to rain. Um, but such is life. I mean, they are actually predicting this on the, on this particular Friday that we are going to have rain and it's going to be particularly miserable um, for the day. But I thought with the sunshine coming through, it might be a little bit better. Um, and the next one is, and this this one got me. So um, I, like many of you, buy and sell on eBay. And I'm not going to show you my eBay bill, but that is my eBay bill for this particular month. Um, I don't, I'm not prolific in selling on eBay, I have to be honest. But at the moment, the housemates and I are having a real good clear out of all the junk that we all have accumulated. Um, and it comes down to a number of things. Um, it's It's sort of kind of my desire to downsize my lock up a little bit so I've got a fairly big lock up and I want to downsize it so I really need to go through that and decide what I want to keep for perpetuity and what can just go out the door um, and uh, my housemates are in a fairly similar uh, one is in the throes of divorce um, and the other is is just trying to sort of declutter so um at the moment, we're all sort of going through this phase of selling stuff on eBay, and I've got an eBay account. I'm a fairly active seller on on eBay, so we're kind of sort of using my eBay account and then dividing up the spoils, if you like. Um, now, it was really interesting is since we went into sort of the whole sort of COVID nineteen lockdown thing, eBay have basically scrapped listing fees, so that's obviously to make people set a list on eBay um, for sale. Which is, you know, applaud them, you know, good idea. Uh, and then they pretty much have implemented a 10% uh, fee for selling. So whatever sales price you get, 10% of that will go to eBay. Um, and it's that's actually quite heavy, but 
if you know about it, you can make sure that you price your thing appropriately to cover the 10%. So that's all well and good. What I didn't realize is that eBay ha never used to charge fees on PMP. And I literally, uh, normally with the, the eBay invoice, <laughs> when it comes through, um, I just take a glance at it, it's, it's X amount of pounds, and I go, all right, whatever. And, and I literally just ignore it, because it's never particularly heavy, because as I said, I'm not really a prolific eBay seller. I'm not a seller of, of junk. I haven't been in the past. Um, I have got a couple of keyboards up for sale at the moment, and I've got a couple of other bits and bobs up for sale. Um, uh, and obviously, as I said, you know, other 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 individual stuff is up for sale as well on my eBay account. But what really hit me about this was, so I I am always try to be fairly keen and honest on on PMP when I sell on eBay. So um, if I'm selling something, what I'll do is I'll weigh it, uh, and then I'll take the dimensional. Um, was it they call it the volume the dimensional volumetrics so the length the depth and the and the height of the of the particular thing i'm going to say, sell add a few centimeters on for some sort of packaging around it um and then what i then do is i then sort of go on to a service like herms or uh, another service in the uk is called interpass or that actually compares a number of couriers and i get a I get a price and i sort of say right that's particularly what i'm looking for i calculate um, an amount for packaging because people forget packaging they they just price for the postage um, or the courier they don't price for you know if you've got to go and buy bubble wrap or you've got to go and buy boxes or you've got to go and do this or you've got to go and do that so people tend to not to buy um, that and believe you me I mean tape is quite expensive as well <laughs> um, brown parcel tape um, so I tend to sort of like, you know, I just sort of have a, a rough idea of a, a pound for this and a pound for that. And then that comes up with the postage number, um, which I then round up to the nearest pound. And uh, that's what I normally put in the uh, uh, PMP. But now you've got to think about something else in the PMP that you've got to count for. And the fact that is that whatever number you come up with for PMP, that's nine tenths of what you need to charge the end the buyer um, because eBay are going to take a slug um, of that cash for fees and so the first thing the first point to come out of this is beware because otherwise you'll you'll end up under costing your PMP and it comes out of your sales price not comes out of eBay's price and you really can't once you've done the done the deal and the payer the buyer has paid you, you can't really go back and sell one another I don't know, pound or something for PMP. It just doesn't work like that. So first thing is is you need to sort of kind of build that in to your PMP price. So remember, PMP is not just postage, it's all the other stuff you have to do to get that parcel or package from you to the buyer. So it's not just postage. That's the first thing to remember. Um, and you need to build in this additional 10%. So there you go. The, uh, and those of you who don't know the sort of simple, the simple maths is it's um, your number divided by 9 times 10. Okay. So if, if, you, if you're not quite sure about how to work out fractions, that's the simple maths. So whatever you think about for PMP, Divided by nine, times it by ten, and that's the number you should be charging the buyer. Okay, um, but I do understand why they're doing it, and the reason why they're doing it is, and and it's really prevalent on a couple of listings I looked at in the last week or so, where the listing is up for I don't know, uh, let's let's say it's twenty pounds. Okay, so somebody's put a listing up for twenty pounds. And you think, great, that's great, and whatever it happens to be. And then what they've done is they then put the PMP at £30. Okay, so you're sitting there looking at this thing, and quite often a lot of the stuff I'm, I'm bidding on is, is things like discs and memory cartridges and that sort of stuff. Um, and you know full well that to get that from 
I mean, I, I can tell you now that my friend Bruce in the States, I exchange stuff with him on a, on a regular basis. Um, and I send him discs. And I know that for me to send discs from the UK to the US costs me about five pounds, okay, to send, you know, probably about that many discs from here to there is about five pounds for a courier, uh, maybe 10 if it's, a, if it, if it's a, uh, a bit bigger box. But that's kind of the sort of area. So that's, and, I, and I'm seeing people charging, you know, I mean, there was one guy, he wanted, uh, was it about $15? I think it was $15 for the discs that he was selling, um, which were an original set of discs for one of the synthesizers. And then he wanted 60, 60 65 dollars, I think it was, for the PMP, and I just thought you cheeky bugger, because what he's trying to do is he's trying to effectively get his profit margin through the PMP, not his profit margin through actually selling. And this goes back to how eBay used to used to used to bill you, because they used to bill you by whatever you sold it for, and the PMP was classed as a disbursement. But they've got wise to the number of people on eBay now doing this PMP scam. So they now charge you flat rate, 10% across whatever you receive for those goods that you have sold. So there you go. Just be aware of that. And the last one relates to this. Now, a couple of you have seen this um, floating around in the background of some of the videos I've done recently. And a number of you have said, what is it? Um, and that's a very good question because although you can't see it, um, sitting in front of me here is, this is the computer that I use for the disk library. Okay, so this is a... Uh, I have a sta separate computer that I've had to sp specially configure um, to allow me to import and export this for the disk library. Um, and I've said before, I had a lot of pain trying to get this thing to work correctly. Um, but it is a separate computer. It's, um, it does everything I need it to do. And it's basically stripped down of everything else in terms of operating system. It just literally does that one task. <laughs> It's a one ho it's a one trick pony as we would say in the UK, but um, that's you know many people have said how do I do it? That's how I do it. Um, I'm not going to show you the process because it is long winded. Uh, and sitting on top of this is the S330 because um, I can't f how I got the discs to hand. Um, I'm going to pause the video. Let me give me a sec. Give me a sec. Um, so the reason why I've pulled the video is because I wanted to go and get the box of discs. Uh, and the reason why this is all out in front of you is because um, I actually managed to get hold of the original system disc in the original packaging. Um, and the original system disc for the S330 contains three discs. It contains um, the first system disc with an operating system on it, which is that one, which is for piano. The second system disc uh, with the operating system on it is something called multi-patch. And then you have the utility disc. And this is quite an important disc um, because the utility disc allows you to do things like conversion. And I will be doing a video on conversion uh, shortly. Um, I'm still, if I'm brutally honest, trying to work it out myself. Um, the process allows you to convert between the different samplers of this era. Um, but I have, um, for those of you are, that are interested, there are my copies. So these, these are the ones that I will use um, with this machine. So I don't use, this, is, this will go off now to, to storage. I don't use that. I use, I always make a copy and I use the copies. So they're the copies. Anyway. That's the reason why all this is in front of me, because that's what I've been doing. Anyway, so going back to this thing. So the question is, what is this thing? So Roland for um, the 550, S50 and 330 created a sequencer. 
okay? And the sequencer required a different operating system, okay? So you have in here uh, blah, 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 the various pieces of this thing. So you had a director utility disk, which is that one. Um, you have the system disk, which is that one. And you had a sound data disk, which is that one. Okay, so these were all the three disks. Let me just put these labels because I've still got the, the they've, whoever had this before me, he also included the original decals. Um, which needs to just slot back into here, like so. And in order to run this thing, what you had to do as a sequencer is you had to have one of those, and that is what we would call now a USB dongle. Um, but it was this is this is way before USB, but it is effectively a hardware key that allows that turns this thing into a sequencer. Now. The reason why I haven't done a video on it is, if I'm brutally honest, I've only actually literally put the disc in the machine once so far. Um, I just haven't had time. Uh, I, I'm sort of, I get, I get spouts of, of, of where I've got time to actually do videos. And unfortunately this week, I haven't really had any time to do any videos. Um, I have been working on some other stuff and I've had some fairly long days um, with the job job. Um, so I really haven't had chance. So this thing arrived, um, I've probably had this for about six to eight weeks now. Um, it came from Italy. A uh, guy who was selling that was in Italy. And the reason why you guys haven't seen a video on it yet is because I really haven't had chance to play with it. I don't really understand it. Um, for this to work, you do need to have a screen with it. You can't just use it on the machine itself. You you have to have the screen because you have to see what what's going on with the with the data. Um, so the honest answer is for those of you who have queried what this is, that is what it is. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd tell you what it was, um, and I will be doing some videos on it shortly, uh, and I'll also be doing some videos on the. SYS505 utility for the S50 um, and I'll explain the reason why I'm going to do uh, videos on that is because when you when you buy one of these synthesizers where you buy the S50, the S330 or the S550 you can interchangeably move or use data from one system to another okay that is, of, uh, you're able to do that. What you're not able to do is you're not able to share the disk natively. Okay, what you have to do is you have to run a conversion utility um, that doesn't affect the, the wave data, but does make the disk readable. So for this, the, the disk for this and the 550 are pretty interchangeable. The 550, sorry, the S50 is a slightly different disk format. And that's probably something to do with the, the fact that it was the first one to the to the, the pitch, if you like. Um, but they are slightly different disk formats, so you have to do a conversion between the two. Um, and I, I, I've, I've done it, you know. Um, but what I want to do is I want to go back and re-document it for you guys so you can actually see if you want to buy uh, sounds from one to the other. This is how you convert from one to the other and back again. Um, it is perfectly doable, um, but I just haven't got around to doing the video on it yet. Um, but that's kind of what this channel was set up for, is those sort of technical stuff as well as me playing videos, uh, playing instruments, which I'm going to start doing more and more of um, as we move forward, because I'm in a much better space to be able to do that. So, that is the rant this week. Hopefully this one, fourth time lucky, will be the one where the audio works. Um, according to my audio meter over there, it is recording audio. Um, <laughs> uh, and it is syncing it into the camera. Uh, so hopefully that's all good stuff now. Um, and 
it's it's really I say you'll see you next week. Well, I'll be recording another one of these on Sunday, which is only two days away. So, um, I need to sort of think about some more material, don't I? <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys next week. Remember, live long and prosper. It's all we can do at the moment. See you later, guys. <laughs>